Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble my giant spring sign. This measures an incredible 20.5 inches wide and 10.5 inches tall, but it can still be cut from regular US letter, A4 or 12 by 12 inch card. If I turn it over, you can see that it cuts in different sections and then you stick them together to create the giant off the mat design. And this is a great way to cut something really large with your Cricut, but still use a regular cutting mat and your regular card. To get the design, check the link in the description below, or you can get it as part of my Spring Mega Bundle, which is a huge collection of spring themed designs, including layered designs, greetings cards, shadow boxes, and more. Again, I'll drop the link to that in the description. Now this design comes without any text on the front. So we're going to be making our own text in Design Space, which means you can make it say whatever you want. So go ahead, download the file, and then I'll show you how to get it into Design Space, how to add the text, and then how to stick it all together. After you've purchased the design from my SVG shop, you'll be emailed a link to download the file. When you download it, it comes in a zip folder. You'll need to unzip the folder before you can upload the SVG into Cricut Design Space. To do that, find where it's saved on your computer, probably in your downloads folder. And then if you're on a Windows computer, you can simply right click and press extract all. Choose where you want to put it, so I'll put it in the same place and then press extract. I've now got another copy of the folder, but this time it doesn't have that zip picture, which means this is the unzipped one that I'll need to choose in Design Space. If you're on a Mac or a mobile device, it works a little bit differently. So if that's the case, check the description of this video and click through to the main tutorial for this um, giant spring site. And I'll include links in there on how to unzip folders on other types of machine or device. Go into Design Space and start a new project, then click Upload over on the left. Then go into Upload Image and click Browse or drag and drop the file in. Here's the unzipped version, so you can tell this because it doesn't have that little zip. Go in there and then you want to choose the file called Spring Sign Craft with Sarah. It might take a little while to load because there are a lot of layers in here, but when it looks like this, go ahead and press upload. And again, it might take some time, but it will show up in your recent uploads where you can click on it and then press add to canvas. It should load in at the correct size, but we're going to double check. Okay, so mine's loaded in just under 20.5 inches in width and just under 10 and a half. So you could leave it like that. You're not gonna tell any difference. But I'm just going to type in, oops, 20.5 and press enter just to get it back to that nice even size. This is what the design looks like with all of the layers. You can see them down here. And if you want to see what different colors are being used, you can press color sync on the top right. And that changes the layout so it now splits everything out by color. So you can just go through and make sure you've got all the different types of cardstock that you'll need. I'm going to click back to layers so we can see that again. And as you can tell, the design doesn't come with any text on. So you can add your own message, whatever you want to put in here. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to make mine say, welcome to our home. Go into the text tool. And then if you're doing multiple words, I recommend doing it one word at a time because otherwise it'll get too long to be able to cut if you're just doing it from one color. So I'm just going to do the welcome. There we are. And then change the font by selecting the text and going into the drop down. I'm going to choose Cricut fonts and make sure only kerned fonts is ticked and have a little look through. Now I have actually already chosen what font I want to use and it is called BFC Holiday Sparkle. So I've typed holiday in to find it and then it's this one. And I thought this was quite a nice fun font. When choosing a font for this, because it's going to be cut from cardstock, ideally you want to find quite a thick font because if it's too thin then your card is likely to tear when it tries to cut. 
Also, you want to find one where most of the letters are joined together. Otherwise, when you go to cut it, all the layers, if, if all the letters are separate, you'll have to stick each one on individually. And if you've got a lot of letters, that'll take a really long time. Now this one's looking good. So I think I'm going to have my welcome over here. And then I'm going to right click. Ah, you used to be able to right click and duplicate. I guess you can't anymore. All right then. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to click my text and then press duplicate over here. And the reason I did that is so that this is the same font and the same size. And then double click into there. And then I'll add my two hour. That R is a bit funky. It's not touching the U like it should be. So I'll need to fix that. But then I'll also do, oh, this time it worked. Look, right click and duplicate. Maybe it was just having a funny moment <laughs> to, to begin with. So let's write out home in there. Okay, so first I'm going to fix this R. And then I'll work out the sizing because this is too big at the moment. You see it's going over the edge. So I'm going to click on that two hour and then press ungroup in the top. And that splits each letter out onto its own layer. So now if I zoom in, I can get that R and just move it over so that it's touching the U. And then I can drag... Ooh, Let's hide the giant sign for now by clicking the little eye icon next to it. Drag a box around the two and the hour. And then I'm going to weld this. Now welding means that it's going to join all these layers back together into one. But it also means I then can't change the text or the font. So make sure you're happy with your font choice before you change this. Let's click weld. And you see what it's done there is it's filled in that part of the O and I don't want it to do that. So let's undo, select it again and then zoom out, make it really, really big. And actually now I can see that that R isn't quite lined up. So let's do it a bit better. Select it again and now I'm going to try welding it again. And you see that time it didn't um, fill in the O. It does mean that I've now got this slightly different size to the welcome and home. So I'm just going to have to play about with it to get it back so it's looking right. But I think that looks fine. Okay, so I've got my welcome and I'm going to change the colors of these. But first I will change the size. So let's bring the giant sign back on. Select all my text by clicking one of the layers in the layers panel. Then press shift and hold it down to select the other ones. And then make it a little bit smaller. There, I'm happy with that. All right, so when I zoom in, you see where my welcome and home are. They've got cut lines that looks like it's going to cut through the letters. If I change it to a lighter color, you'll be able to see better. You see like where that O is meeting the M, there's a line. Now that would generally mean that it was going to try and cut that. But because it's text, it's a text layer, it actually won't. It will cut it fine. And if you want to be 100% sure it's not going to cut between the letters, you can just weld the layer. Again, that's filled in my E. So I'm going to click on that and just copy the width so I can put it exactly back. I should have done that on the two hour as well undo, um, hide the sign and then do my trick again of making that super big, weld it and now I can paste in that size again. There we go. I'm just going to do the same thing on the welcome. So I'll copy the width, make it really big and actually look my L and my O aren't quite in the right place. I couldn't really tell before. I'm just going to move these over. Of course, this means that my width actually won't be right anymore. 
but never mind. Okay, let's weld that. And I will just paste that width back in. I only changed it a little bit. That's all the right size now. Everything is welded. So, oh, where's it gone? I'm just going to put it back into position and then change the colors. I find the easiest way is either to click and then go into the colors and then all the colors that are used in this design will be at the top. So you can easily choose one and make sure it's the same. Or another way you can do it is go to that color sync menu again. And then at the moment, my two hour is gray. I can click and drag it onto a different color and it will change it. And the same with this home. If I change it to pink, there we go. All right, so I'm now happy with how that's looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. To do that, click make it and it will split everything out. And here's how you can see that all of the background bits come in the sections. If I scroll down to the green, you see you've got different bits that will all stick together using these little triangles as a guide. If you want to change the paper size, go into this drop down and then you can change it. So all of mine was cut out from A4 paper. It did end up being quite a lot of sheets, um, but I think it's worth it because it does end up really pretty. This one's a slight off-white, which is why it's now 12 by 12. And what you'll need to do is go through every single color to change the paper size. You can drag and drop things on here. So you might be able to move things around, to take up less space, and then it will lose, lose. Then it will use up less of your craft supplies. When you're happy with how it's all looking, press continue, that'll connect to your Cricut machine and then get everything cut out from your cardstock. Here are all of my layers cut out and I've led them down in the correct order and just placed everything one on top of the other. And I find this is really helpful to make sure that you've got all of the pieces and also so that you know that you're happy with all of the colors and everything before you start sticking. It does take quite a little bit of time to get everything led in order, but I really do think it's worth it. I just realized my little daffodil head's coming apart there. I've also got my writing along here, and it's all ready now for me to start sticking. I'm gonna be using a combination of glue and foam squares. The glue I'm using is called Kalal, and I like this because it doesn't bend or wrinkle the card like some other glues can do. Alternative glues, which also work really well, are Barely Art Glue and Art Glitter Glue. As this is a big bottle, I like to put the glue into these tiny needle tip applicator bottles. They have really thin nozzles on them, which means I'm gonna be able to get the glue into all of these pieces. The foam squares I'm using are from Dot and Dab, but any foam squares will do. We now need to move all of these pieces apart so that we can start sticking the base together. And I'm gonna be really careful with this and try and get everything into little individual piles so that I know where each bit is when I come to stick it back on. So with all these butterfly layers, I'm gonna take them all off as one and just put them over to one side. And then the same, with the flowers so I'm just sliding off all of those patterned layers all the colors and just leaving the green all right so now I've got my green pieces left and again I'm gonna take these off in order now I'm left with my four base pieces my very bottom green and you know that it's the bottom because it's got these little triangles in which is how we're gonna know where to line it up so get your glue and then start on one side, so I'll start over here. And then you want to run your glue along the edge so that it's this side of that little triangle at the bottom. And then take the piece that goes next to it, and we're gonna stick this on top so that the two triangles, here we go, triangle one and two, so that they sit perfectly one on top of the other. And that's how we'll know that we've got this in the right place. And then when you're doing the top bit, just make sure that the edges of the different patterns line up. 
and then I'll do the same for the next one so just glue along that edge then line up the triangle and then the top pattern also lines up and one more take your time with this because if your base pieces aren't completely lined up correctly then it means that the other layers won't fit or might not fit when you try and stick them together but there's the base of my layered spring so oh, I just moved it did you see that my glue's not quite dry so I just broke it all apart there we go <laughs> And on that note, I'm going to give this some stability by turning it upside down when that glue is a little bit more dry. And then I'll add some sticky tape down all of the join lines to help to um, stabilise and protect it. Okay, so now that glue's had a few moments to dry, I'm going to turn this upside down and add some tape down all the join lines. Normally, I would use just regular sticky tape, but I could not find it. So I'm going to use some masking tape. There's my masking tape and now I just know that this is going to be a bit more secure. So I can turn it back and we can think about the next layer which is the brighter green. This one comes in four pieces too. Now these ones don't have the um, triangles on them because we're going to be lining it up to um, that base green. So you can see where it all goes because it's gonna line up against there. For this layer, it's up to you if you want to glue it or if you want to use your foam pads. I'm gonna use my glue just so it's a little bit quicker for this video. And also because this would need a lot of foam squares if we were gonna be foaming it. But if you want to add some more dimension, then um, by all means, use some foam. I'm having to do this little bit off camera because the sign is so big and I don't wanna be gearing it on top of the layers that are already there in case I make a mess. So I'll start with this um, top right piece and then line it up using the flowers at the top as a guide. Okay, so that will line up perfectly with the light green underneath. And then next I'll do this bottom one. So just check I've got it round the right way. Turn it upside down. Add some glue. I'll try and do this so you can see it this time. Adding quite a lot because we're gonna have quite a few layers going on top of this. There we go. And it'll overlap that top bit of the same colour a little bit so that we don't have any gaps in the green. Do this top one next. And then one more at the bottom, which will be this one. So you can see everything ends up really well aligned to make the giant off the mat section. All right, we can move on to more green. This time it's this darker green. And this comes in four bits again. Um, it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. So again, this one could be glued or it can be foam squared. I'm gonna stick with the glue. Just like before, we can line up these flowers at the top and down the sides. And you've got the nice straight line along the bottom to know where to put things. OK, 
can see how this is starting to come to life now with all of the different greens showing through. The next layers to add on are a bit more of a brighter green. And whilst I'm doing that, I need to also put in these cutouts of the flowers. And now these will need to go on first. So this is adding the dimension to the stems of the daffodils. I've got these three pieces here. And I know it's the same colour as the layer they're going on, but because this is going to have foam, it's going to bring them up and make it look more realistic. So they need to be done first. Move the green just underneath so that I can see what I'm doing. And get my foam squares. Turn the flowers upside down. This is going to be really hard to show you. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to put that piece in there just so you can see what I'm doing. I've got my foam squares here. Turn this daffodil upside down. And then just add some of these. Here are my foam squares in the head of the daffodil. And you don't want to add any into the stem because otherwise it will get bothered by the green that is about to go on top. So just put it in the head of the flowers. And then peel the little tops off to reveal all of the stickiness underneath. Then stick this on, lining it up with what's underneath. And then do the same for the other two daffodil pieces. Now those are done, we can think about adding the green underneath. And there are two ways you can do this. You can either add the foam squares directly to the back of this, or you can put it onto the darker green. So your risk with doing it on the darker green is that you accidentally get some on bits that isn't going to be covered up by this light green. So it's probably easiest to put it onto the light green. Now I can stick this on and it's going to sit over this little bit on the daffodil we've just stuck and then the leaves at the edge will line up and the top of that tulip. When you do the next piece, there we go, um, which will go on like that, you need to be careful that you don't put any foam squares underneath a bit that's already part of the green. So for this one, I think I'll add my foam directly to the dark green. I've just realised, actually, it would have been easier to glue all of these green bits together separately and then add the foam. So I'm going to make sure that when I write up the instructions for this, that's what I say. And I'm going to do that for the rest of these pieces. So we'll start this side. Let's move this. Not entirely sure I've managed to put I've put that far enough over so let's just double check before the glue dries okay so now I've done that I can just add the foam on the back here okay so I've just realized I did exactly what I said not to do and I've put foam squares down this bit so hopefully if you um, stuck it together first, that won't be a problem. I've just taken those off now. And I can line this up. There. Okay. We're getting to the end of the larger pieces now with this white section, which is going to make up the front of the sign piece that we'll add the wording to. I'm going to glue on, and then the border frame which sits on top of it I will probably foam, but I haven't 100% decided. Our next and final big pieces are the outside of the frame. As this is going to have so much depth on top of it, I think I'm happy gluing this one as well. 
I'll probably put in the assembly guide that it could be glue or foam so that you can make the decision. Whew, and breathe. Okay, we can breathe a big sigh of relief because all of the complicated bits are now done, thankfully. <laughs> Blimey, this is definitely the most complicated giant sign that um, we've done so far. Now we can start adding all of the little pretty bits on top. And what I'm going to do before I start sticking is just put everything back into its rightful place. So that you just know before we start sticking that everything's going where it's supposed to. Because I'd hate to stick half of it and then realise I put... A flower in the wrong place or something like that and then it ruins the whole thing that would be really bad not worrying too much about being completely neat with how these are going back on because we're gonna have to move them in a minute to stick them anyway so now we can start sticking these on one at a time and the order you do it in is completely up to you um, so I will have an order in the assembly guide but if you want to you can do it separate because None of these bits actually rely on the other pieces. They're all now individual, their own little layered designs. So I think I'll start down here on the bottom right with this little yellow flower. And I'll add foam to the bottom of the yellow part. This is the fun part where everything really starts coming to life with the extra dimension. The white flower on top will be done with some glue. Sorry if you can hear a whirring noise, my boiler's just come on, which is right next to me. And for these little flowers, I'm going to do a very similar thing. So, foam pads on the bottom, and then I'll glue the top. I didn't line that up at all. Let's try that again. Uh, I think I put the glue. Oh no, there we go. Okay, so you might need to wiggle these around a bit until all the petals line up. I think I actually just put the glue on the wrong side of that one. But you can't really tell, and actually it's quite nice with a little bit of the yellow poking out. Alright, so next let's do this pink flower. And again, I'll do foam on the bottom. that was quite right either. There we go. And then I'll glue the two other layers on. And I'm going to keep that consistent for all of these pink flowers. Foam for the big section and glue for the others. So I'll do the same for these two. Next we'll do this butterfly and I'm going to move that there so you can actually see what I'm doing. I will foam the first layer and glue all of the others. I'm going to do the gluing first. For the middle part I've cut some of my foam pads in half so that they're really skinny. And I'll just add a little bit in there, so the middle of the butterfly sort of pops out a bit. There. And then we can turn them upside down, add some regular foam pads on the back. This is looking so pretty. Okay, seeing as we're going right to left, I guess we'd better do this daffodil neck. So there's quite a few pieces. Let's line them all out so we can see. I'm going to glue this bit onto the design, but first I'll build up the rest of it. We'll start with this solid layer and add foam squares to this one. Then the next layer is this off-white one, which will create the detail on those back petals, and this is a glue layer. Next is the solid one for those front petals, and this will be foam squares. The 
then for the detail layer, this one is glued. The big middle yellow bit is a foam layer. And then the three remaining ones will all be glued. Phew, that's a lot of work in that little daffodil. <laughs> now I can glue it on there. I love how realistic all of these flowers look, especially once you've got the foam in and you get the dimension of the petals. We'll do this tulip one next, and this is a little bit easier because it's only four layers. I'll foam each individual one of these so that it ends up the same height as the daffodil. Then this can be glued to the space on the side. Okay, another daffodil time. This is slightly less layers than the first one because you don't have the extra white petals on top. But there's still a few. <laughs> this time I'll end up foaming the daffodil to the base green so that it's the same amount of depth as the other flowers. But to start, let's assemble it separately and this one with the little cutouts and the petals is a glue layer. You need to be careful on this one that you line the correct petals up because they're all slightly different shapes. There. The solid one will be a foam square layer. Again, I'm just twisting this round to make sure those petals are the correct way up. The last detail layer, oh, I just threw it away. Um, this will be another glue layer. There. Then the solid yellow middle will be foam. This is another one that just takes a little bit of wiggling to make sure you get it the right way round. And then finally the yellow bit with the cutout in the middle will be glued. I'm going to give that a second to dry, so I'll start adding my foam directly onto this part. Look at that, we're halfway there. I'll move on to some easier ones for a moment and do the rest of the yellow daisy flowers. So what do you reckon, are you gonna make this? If you've got this far in the video, to be fair, you're probably making it as you go along because <laughs> it's a long video. If you've made any of my other giant signs, how does this one compare? I think it'll be a little bit more complicated to put together than the other ones because there's so many of the greenery layers on the base that come in different sections. But if you do make it, I'd love to see a photo. So either email me one, sarah at craftwithsarah.com or if you're in my Facebook group, Cricket Craft Ideas and Free SVGs by Craft for Sarah. It's a bit of a mouthful, but that's what it's called. Um, if you're a member of that, then go ahead and share your photo in there. That'd be amazing. I love seeing everything that um, you make with my designs. So all these daisies, I'm just foaming that yellow layer and gluing the white layer on on top. One left, well, of the daisies. Wish it was one left out of everything, but not that lucky. Still a fair few things to go. There's that one. What should we do next? 
How about the little ladybird? So I'm going to ooh, lose the red apparently. <laughs> Got caught in my jumper. I'm going to stick the black and the red onto the white. And then I'll use some foam pads to stick it onto the sign. should have let the glue dry before I put the foam on because you see I've just moved it all. Actually you probably can't see because my fingers are uh, almost out of shot. Okay. Little ladybird there. Right so what have we got left? We've got daffodil, butterfly and two tulips. I'll do the butterfly next I think. I'm going to do the same as what I did on the other one so these will be glued and then I'll add a little bit of foam for the body and then I'll foam the whole butterfly to the green. Butterfly number two can now Sit on the sign, looking beautiful. Next, we'll move on to this tulip. Let's see how many layers it is. We've got four. So just like with the other tulip, I will foam all of these. Whilst I'm up here, let's grab these other tulips. And this one is only three. So again, we will foam all of these parts. Now I'm gonna glue this tulip so that it'll look like this one's a little bit further away than this one as it's one foam pad lower down. But if you preferred them to be the same height, then you could use your foam pads to stick it to the sign instead. One flower left. All these pieces. All right, first we've got the biggest solid yellow and this will be foamed to the lighter layer underneath. The next layer, the one with the little outlines for these petals, will be glued. The next solid yellow will be a foam square la layer. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice is going. I've been talking for so long doing this video. This layer on top will be glued. Solid orange will be foam squared. And then finally, the little orange on top, we will glue. All of this will be glued, oops, glued to the sign. And that is all of the flowers done. Look at how pretty this is. I am a little bit in love with this. All we've got to do is add the text to the bottom. So let's get that back in. And you'll want to put everything into position before you start gluing, just to make sure it's all going to fit. You don't want to start gluing the first word and then work out you can't fit the last one on. Okay, I'll try and get that straight-ish as well. Okay. Yep, 
that's looking good. So let's get the glue. If you've used a really thick font, then you might get away with the foam squares for the words. But generally, I think glue is going to be easier. It's quite narrow in these little gaps. So be careful that you don't um, add too much that it'll smush over the sides. And also, it's a really bad idea to do what I'm doing, where I'm holding it over the design as I'm gluing. Because if I spill any glue, that's going to splodge straight onto my sign. I'm not pushing it down too hard, because I don't want the glue to come out the edges. I quite like this font because it's not actually straight along the bottom, so you can't really tell that I am sticking this on wonky. <laughs> I am so bad at getting stuff stuck straight. Okay, phew. We have made it to the end. tweaking that a little bit and there is my spring sign all finished so if you made it this far well done and if you make this sign again well done because it's definitely a paper craft challenge now this is really really thick and sturdy because it had so many green layers on the base it's almost as if you cut the bottom from thick cardboard because it's got so much layers so much layers so many layers reinforcing it. So if you're sticking this straight on your wall you'll probably need quite a lot of blue tack to make sure it stays up or you could use command strips or you could even um, hot glue gun some little hooks to the back so that you can hang it on a nail. Uh, there are lots of different ways that you can display it. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it wasn't too long and rambly. I've tried to edit it down as much as I can. Don't forget to get the template to make this design, head to shop.craftwithsarah.com or follow the link in the description of the video to go straight to the file page. I'll be back very soon with some more Cricut Papercraft tutorials. Thank you for watching, bye!